Hello, fight fans. How you doing? All right, I'm Reed Harris with the UFC. We have a special guest today uh, for our Q&A, and we're going to bring him out in just a second. Before we bring him out, I just want to tell you, there are two microphones here. We're going to do a contest today. The most interesting question gets a bag full of UFC gear, all right? So you guys get in line, and as soon as my guest comes out, you guys can start asking questions. Before we bring him out, though, we have a quick package for you. I just fell in love with the lifestyle, like the whole riding the horses and, and, and that way of life. Like I'm not, I don't like the city, the people bother me. So yeah, so I guess you could say I fell right away, I, I fell in love with it and I started bull riding. And then bull riding, you gotta wear a cowboy hat and you gotta chew tobacco and you gotta wear stupid boots. So I had, I had to do all that, you know, just be part of the game. And then, I don't know, it's just me, I guess. Riding bull is super hard. It's one of the hardest sports I've ever done. I think it's still one of the hardest sports there is. Man, you can compare a lot of it to, to like when we're back here getting ready for a fight. You know, they line all the bulls up in the chutes and everyone's getting ready. And that's all you got to worry about is that right there. Not worry about the guys right in front of you, the guys right behind you. You worry about what's right in front of you, you know. The bull's going ape shit before he's standing there. I, I relate a lot of it to fighting out. Like, I don't care whose fight's in front of me. I don't care whose fight is after me, you know, it's all. So it kind of goes hand in hand and you get down in there so powerful, man. And they just... Feel their muscles wanting, wanting to go, wanting to go. They're just ready, and, and their first hop is out and to the left. I mean, that's the only thing you know. And just go and get, and here you go. <laughs> like fighting on stage is scary. I'm scared to death. It's one of the scariest feelings I, I, I ever have. And I'm, I'm a complete wreck. Telling Greg, oh, this is the last time, man. I'm not doing this no more. My nerves can't take it. Actual fight night. Oh my God, I'm, I'm a wreck. I'm a wreck. Starting training and fighting, like man, watching George fight and watching Anderson Silva, you know, it's like man, someday I'm gonna be there, and um, it's, it's awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in 2006, my dear friend Charles Mask Lewis called me when I was running the WC, and he said, "I got this guy you got to look at. His name is Cowboy Cerrone. We brought him in, and he." His first fight, he submitted a guy in a technique I'd never even seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorite fighters in the whole company, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. What's going on, Las Vegas? <laughs> I guess we just start. I don't know how this works, so I don't know. Yeah. Hey. How's it going, cowboy? I just met you outside. Yeah. Um, where's my Goldberg at? Where's your host? Yeah, I don't know. They'd, I, I gotta run the show by myself, I guess. Okay. A uh, real quick message to Chris Levin. Uh, much like tomorrow's fight, I believe you can win in life too, so I believe in you. Um, my question to you is during WEC, you had these epic battles with like Razor Rob McAuliffe. Benson Henderson, Jamie Varner. Um, is there anybody that you would like to fight besides Nate Diaz that, that you see that you want to fight or that rubs you the wrong way or anything like that? Not necessarily it rubs me the wrong way, but I uh, definitely want to get another shot at Benson, you know. But uh, Anthony Pettis, man, coming off January 26th. So that's, uh, that's who I have my eye on. That's who I've been wanting to fight for a long time. You're the man. Cowboy, big fan, love watching you fight. You're very exciting. That said, you've got nine fights in the UFC, six of which you've earned a bonus for. Why do you think, or what do you attribute to your success in earning all these bonuses in the limited amount of fights? Uh, man, I think it just has to do with not taking a step backwards, you know, just, just constantly pressing forward and just, uh, that's, that's the part of the fight game I like when, when you're in the battle and, and you, you have no choice, you know, to look for a way out, but I'm not gonna find a way out, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and finish the fight, so just standing in the pocket and giving it, man, that's a, uh, I think that's the only thing I can, I can attribute to all the bonuses, and I love the bonuses, I hope they keep coming. <laughs> all right, man, good luck. Thank you. All right, works. <laughs> Uh, I had a question. The question is, what's your thoughts on Gilbert Melendez jumping over to the UFC with an automatic title shot? Do you have any choice words for Gilbert? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I just seen that too the other day. Uh, no, man, the guy's over there being a champion for a while, you know, so if that's what Dana wants to do is give him a shot, then, I mean, that's, I don't really have a say or a choice, so I just kind of wait in line and, and get through Pettis and then just wait. And if it's if it's Gilbert, awesome, you know? I mean, if they want to give him a fight before, hell, I'm, I'm game, so I don't care. I just want to fight anybody, so it don't matter to me. Great answer. Uh, another one real quick. What's your thought on the main event tomorrow? <laughs> I'm a big junior fan, man, so, uh, you know, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, man, it's, it's going to be a scrap, you know, and, but like I said, I'm a big junior fan. I like the guy. I like his personality, and I like the way he fights, so, uh, yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Hey, I'm uh, Leo from Red Deer, Alberta, and, <laughs> yeah, thanks. I've been fighting since I was about four, and I was wondering what kind of advice you can give a new fighter. Yeah, man, all the, all the, all the hardship and all the, all the days you don't want to go and all the nights you want to go out, those are the days that you have to go and train and keep going. You know, when I go out with my buddies and that next day I miss training because I, you know, those are the days I wish I could take back and, and be on the grind and keep going. So, you know, you're young, and that's the thing I'd, I'd say to, to, to chase your dream and, and, keep, and keep the days you don't want to go, the days you need to make the most important days, you know? Is that, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one more quick one. Uh, how is it in the ring, like fighting? In the ring is the best thing. It's the, in the back, walking out to the ring, the scariest thing in the whole world, man, because uh, you want to throw up and you just feel sick. And, and I, I don't even have a word to explain for it, but and it, it all happens all the way until I take my first punch. You know, then everything just kind of hones in and it's just the guy in front of me. But other than that, the lead up to it, the build up, the, the here right now, waiting for January 26, man, that these are all scary days, you know, training every day. And, and uh, I, 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 the fighting is easy, if, if I can answer that for you. That, that's the easy part, getting in there and just shit and getting and giving everything I got. That part, that's the easy part, but the, the training and the build up to it, that's the hard part. Yeah, thanks. Kick some ass more. Yes, sir, thank you. How's it going, cowboy? Going all right. I got a question for you, brother. Uh, what do you find to be your biggest motivator to make it to where you want to pursue fighting and to perfect your skills so that you can be the best you can be in the cage? That little youngster you see standing right there, that, that, that's my biggest motivator, man. Those guys that are coming up, you know, we have basketball players, baseball players that have been doing this since they were kids. You know, MMA is new to us, you know, it's kind of a new, our era is bringing it up. So the guys that are building up and becoming young that are knocking on my door that are 18, 19 years old, that are good, well-rounded at everything. Those are the guys that keep me motivated because I have to be on top of my game or I'm just gonna get, you know, they're gonna come in and take over. So I, that, that motivates me every day as the youngsters coming up behind me. Nice, bro, thank you. Hey, what's up, cowboy? Yeah, Joe. How you doing, brother? Doing all right. Hey, man, if you had a time Looking machine. Sharp, like always. Oh, thank you, thank you. I tucked my shirt, I wore this outfit just for you. Yeah, <laughs> Hey, if you had a time machine and you could go back in time and you could talk to yourself before the Nate Diaz fight, what would you tell yourself to do differently? Uh, I've, I, I've never even seen that fight, to be honest with you. I'm so upset with my performance, but I wouldn't tell myself to do anything differently, man. I, uh, my head was, I'm not making excuses, so what I did and what I prepared and how I got ready for that fight is, is everything was correct. It was the night of the fight going out, you know, leading up and, uh, Oh, man, I, I don't know what else I could, I could tell myself or what else I could do. It was just all upstairs in my brain that when I went out there, I couldn't pull that trigger. So I wish I had the answer for that because I, I need to figure it and I need to find it and I need to decide, you know, I hope that doesn't happen again. And uh, so I don't know, Joe. I don't, I don't know what else I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is there anything that you did learn from that, though, that you can carry over, let's say, into the Pettis fight? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, as far as a mental game, that's, that's one thing that I've been trying to, to, to beat, you know, and, and that's the part that's the hardest, you know, beating yourself backstage before you come out here and let it all go, you know, and uh, just trying to do what I do, what I do every day in the gym, like down at grades, you know, guys come in there, I'll spar anybody and I don't feel like I lose rounds, you know, but then how do I apply what I do in the gym to fight night and those are the things right. I'm trying to bring with me every day, so. Awesome. Kick some ass, brother. All right. I feel pretty privileged. I'm the first woman up here. Um, with all the fight styles you do, is there anyone you fear the most for the injury you might get? Wrestling. I hate wrestling. It seems like every day when you're in the gym wrestling, somebody's hurting something. So, uh, and I'm just not very good at it. So I dread going in there wrestling practice every day. Do you mean for the training or the actual fight? Oh, sorry for training. Yeah, for the actual fight. Um, is there any style you fear the injury you could get the most? For fighting? Yeah, mm -hmm. probably 
boxing or kickboxing, getting knocked down in front of everybody, you know, that, that'd be definitely the worst. You know? I'd rather blow out a knee or something because then I could just, but uh, you know, getting knocked out would totally suck. You don't want a knee? No. Um, and do you think you'll win so that you can beat Benson Henderson? I know I'll win. How about that? All right. Hell yeah. Hey, Cowboy. Hey, first and foremost, man, hope you beat Showtime tomorrow. All right, really, thank you. And uh, I know after the Nate Diaz fight, I saw improvement in your next fight. You worked on your hands. And I know Anthony Showtime Pettis, he comes from all different angles. And I know you don't like wrestling, man, but I think that's going to what you got to do to get it done tomorrow, bro. You name it, man. That's what I've been, uh, I've been working on a lot of my wrestling. Just like she said, you know, I hate it. And that's one of the things in my game that I'm trying to work on the best because that dictates where the fight goes, you know. And that's yeah. one thing with the Diaz fight that I didn't do is wrestle and take him down. And when I did drop him, I should have attacked him. And, uh, you know, those things you look back on and losing, I guess they say, is the best thing for you, you know, sometimes as much as it sucks. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm with you. Wrestling is, is going to be the key to that fight. Uh, yeah. Pull the trigger tomorrow, bro. Good luck. Thank you. Hey there, cowboy. What's going on? Uh, quick question. What do you think your biggest fuel is as a fighter and a person in life right now? As far as, like, motivation just to keep going? Or, I mean, what, what, how do you mean? Oh, well, like fighting, life, everything that drives you to, uh, to be the best. And probably my lifestyle outside of fighting is what drives me. You know, waking up and going wakeboarding or going bungee jumping or skydiving. All the things that took away from me, that's what drives me every day to do it. Right on. Uh, last question, no disrespect, big fan. Is the moon made of cheese? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, no, moon is not made of cheese. Right, right on, Cowboy. Good luck tomorrow, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so going off of his, uh, do you still go out bungee jumping, wakeboard, and snowboarding all that all the time? Um, according to that dangerous clause, no. Yeah, according to the dangerous <laughs> clause, no. Uh, as far as me touching on the wakeboarding thing, that's something I want to do. I want to be a professional wakeboarder, you know? So I think when I go out and do it, I'm not endangering myself. You know, I'm practicing a skill just like I do wrestling or I do kickboxing. So to answer your question, yes, I do still do those things. You know, there's a, I enjoy what I do. And... Uh, I understand the side where we're gonna get hurt and all that, and I respect that. So like leading up to a fight when I sign the contract, no, I don't do those things. But as soon, like this summer, when I don't have a fight, yeah, you know, I'm gonna sit down with Dana, sit down with the guys and say, man, this is what I love, this is what feels me, this makes me who I am, you know, can I, you tell me I can't go ride my horses, I have four horses out in my pasture that I can't ride, you know? So these are things that I need to talk and address. And, um, but like I said, it makes me the person I am outside of this cage. and. Uh, so yeah, and leading up to the fight, I understand they don't want to get hurt. You don't, they don't want to have people not show up to their fights, and uh, I'm here no matter what. So. Oh, for sure. And speaking of which, uh, can I come boarding with you this summer? Yeah, absolutely, man. I come out <laughs> Lake Mead all the time. So if you're in Vegas, come on. I need to get here though. That's not really. <laughs> and my girlfriend wants a hug. She's right up here. Yeah, too. tell her, tell her, come on. <laughs> How's it going, dude? I'm doing all right. Um, this seems like it's been an uh, almost record-breaking year for injuries. Um, some fights getting canceled. Uh, what do you think's really causing most of the injuries when it comes to training for fights, and what do you do to avoid hitting some of the problems that a lot of fighters seem to be? Yeah, man, that's, uh, it's so crazy because you're training and your body's in the best shape it can be, you know, but it just takes one wrong slip or one wrong takedown to, to, to cause the injury. And, and unfortunately, that's what we do every day. We get in the cage and beat the shit out of each other, you know, and it's, there's no real light way to do that. So when, when you are training with your partners and you're going hard, I mean, those injuries happen and that, I, I, don't, I don't know what we could do to train to be the best and not go hard. You know, you really can't, you can't practice lightly. So, man, I, I have no idea how to answer that, but yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. Good luck in January. Thank you. How are you, cowboy? Um, the Tap Out series show. When Tap Out first sponsored you, how important was that to your career? That was, uh, I remember being here New Year's. I was supposed to fight on Tough Enough. There's a series that uh, is out here in Vegas. And uh, my opponent didn't show up at the weigh-ins. And I remember standing at the top of the uh, Playboy uh, Club up there and saying, man, this is the year. If something doesn't happen this year, I'm hanging it up. Man, I can't keep chasing this dream. I can't take all the, you know, I used to roof and lay hardwood floor and I'd work all day and then go train. I'm like, I can't keep this lifestyle up. It's killing me, you know, I don't. So this has to be, something has to happen this year. So I just happened to be in the right gym. I mean, the, the video and all that, they made it look like they came and found me, but I just happened to walk into that gym that day and be there when those cameras are there, you know? So, uh, man, everything happens for a reason. You know, they, they, they say that, and, and I, I truly believe it. I just happened to be there on the day that they were there, and they were like, man, what's this guy all about? And uh, so that kind of catapulted my career, and I met Reed, you know, in the WC, and I think the WC, I wish we still had, because I think that's the, mm -hmm. that was definitely the, 
you know, leading up into the UFC. It's hard for guys to come from shows that are, that are you know, small shows and then boom into the UFC. So I think we need a, a farm team for sure. But uh, so I love the WC and thank Reed for, for, for taking the call and bringing me on. Well, we're glad they found you. All righty, thank you. Bull riding, MMA, which one would you much rather do? Uh, well, the problem with bull riding is you got to pay money to ride every time. So uh, every time I'll pay my money, I'd get bucked off. So whenever I was doing it for free, I'd cover them, putting the boots to them and getting it done. But whenever I put the money out, I'd, I'd fall on my head. So uh, the money in fighting seems to pay my bills and fund my fun. So uh, I'd rather fight for sure. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Donald, thanks for taking the time. Armando, fan of yours here in Vegas. A lot of fighters have evolved, and some have maybe the trouble making the transition from the WEC to the UFC. As we all know, you are a very successful fighter doing so. In, in the Pettis fight happens, you're successful. Benson Henderson continues to be successful. You guys meet for the third time. What would you do different since you guys have evolved so much? Definitely, man. And Ben is looking on fire, man. What he did to Diaz was unbelievable. You know, he went yeah, out there. And, yeah, he went out there and, <laughs> and looked great. So, I mean, those are things I got to watch the tape. and. and and decide how I want to dictate that fight. You know, Ben's an awesome wrestler, and that's the game I'm working on right now. So hopefully if I can dictate the pace and not allow him to take me down and keep him standing, you know, I think I'm a better striker than Ben. So, you know, it was one of the, one of the angles I would, I would try and take that fight for sure. But, man, that's a fight I've been looking for. And believe me, being 0-2 to Ben sucks, bro. So, you know. Right. <laughs> It'd be the ultimate revenge, though. You got him, with, and that took that belt from him. That's right, man. All right, brother. Good luck. Thank you. All right. It seems like you're into risk outside of fighting, inside of fighting. Fighting. Where's your money at in the casino? Oh, I'm terrible. That's another thing. I mean, so all those beautiful fountains built up front, that's a lot to do with my money because uh, I'm, I'm, oh I'm god awful. But so I just usually spend money that I know I can I lose, you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, and then I just lose it. And Where are you losing off. it at? Dice table? No. Yeah, dice. I used to play dice, and I'm really, really bad at that, but blackjack. So, and... All right. Yeah, whatever. Sometimes I put 200 on red and get black and then just get pissed off, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Looking forward to you uh, beating Ben Henderson in that third fight. I oh, really? can't stand that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Oh, right. <laughs> hey, Donald. Graham from Scotland. I would say, gentlemen, for getting a photo earlier on. Cheers for it, buddy. Oh, okay. You got to do that again. Shit. Sorry. <laughs> 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 okay. I'll, I'll try and speak a little slower then. All right. Uh, um, the question I want to ask you is really important. Um, would you give up riding the horses to ride Ar Ariane Celeste? Oh. <laughs> the answer is that no. I would no. Not. No. No, no. She's a beautiful girl, you know, but, uh, you know, that's, that would have been brand new. <laughs> Brittany Palmer, another beautiful girl, you know, they're both super cool girls, but no, I wouldn't give up any of that for them. There's a lot of girls out there. Ah, oh, man, you disappoint me, man. Right, come on, <laughs> cheers, man. Hey, what's up, cowboy? Two questions. Uh, first, how much of a trash talk is part of your game? I recently read an interview from Anthony Pettis, and he pretty much dead on saying that you're going to 100% shoot on him first. I know a while back before the fight, uh, even was put together, he was saying you were calling him out and talking all this smack. Um, is that part of uh, your game as far as drawing him into the fight or um, as far as being a mental or? Yeah, uh, shit talking's fun, man. I mean, you do it when you're drunk at the bar, you know, it's a good time. So for them to put a camera in your face and let you talk shit, it, it's just, it's, it's easy to do. But as far as Pettis, I don't have anything against him as a person. I'm talking shit because I want the fight, you know, and energy kept happening. He's just the next guy in line to get to that belt. So it's, it's nothing I'm, I'm singling him out because he's hurt, all the, all the things that people are saying. It's, it's he's next, and that's why I'm pursuing him. But uh, as far as I can see, like I said, that's, that's the fun part, man. You got to go out there, and, and then you got to put up or shut up. You got to go out there and eat your words or, or, or let it go, you know. So, uh, but as far as taking him down first, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. I plan on standing and knocking him out. Awesome. Second question, uh, is it possible I could go down there and take a face-off picture with you? Yeah, I, I don't know how that works, but I don't see why not. Man, yeah, come on, shit. <laughs> hey, what's up, cowboy? Um, I was just wondering um, what pre-fight rituals you do that you gotta do before a fight? Uh, nothing.
nothing. I, I'm not very superstitious, so I don't, uh, I don't have any wear the secret underwear or <laughs> don't shower or anything like that, man. I, uh, not, I don't, I don't, I don't have any pre-fight, pre-fight witchers, man. I, I, I definitely don't. I just, uh, I drink beer during training camp. Yeah. Maybe that <laughs> could do it. I don't know that, uh, I guess they say it's the best thing after a workout and it feels so good. So. <laughs> All right, man. I got one more. Um, what's your take on mountain oysters? On what? Mountain oysters. I love Rocky Mountain oysters. Yeah, boy. Right on, man. Thank you. Good luck. That's cow balls for y'all to know what those are. <laughs> well, um, speaking of cow balls, what'd you eat for breakfast? Uh, man, I haven't. I drove. I missed my flight. Uh, so my uncle and I drove. Nine o'clock last night, straight up. I haven't been to sleep very much. He drove most of the way, and uh, I'm here, so I haven't eaten yet. I actually came straight out of my truck, which is parked in the parking lot, to you beautiful people. So there you go. How about that? Okay, well, what do you normally eat before a fight? Um, I like Chipotle, as weird as that sounds. Yeah, and I ask for one. I usually get four hard tacos, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's what I, I like to eat. I'm a big Chipotle guy with corn, sour cream, and lettuce. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> One second. Uh, you fought Ben twice. Did you ever notice him fighting with the toothpick in his mouth? No, that's awesome though, I think. I was asking his manager how he does it, because after I seen all the pictures on the talk, I, I tried it. And <laughs> I had to bite a little bit of it off to even get it to fit in my mouth. So he either has a bigger mouth than me, or I don't know how he does it, because I figure maybe it's, it gets it wet, and it, I don't know. That's pretty cool, though. Thanks. <laughs> First of all, I got tickets to see you in Chicago next month, so I'm pretty Alrighty. excited to see that. I'm a big, big fight fan. I try to make it out as much as I can. I will try um, to come out so, and give it everything for you. Oh, for sure, for all sure. Right. And. Um, you know, with that being said, you know, assuming that you do go out and win, which I'm hoping you do next month, um, there's another really big lightweight fight tomorrow night on the card with uh, Lozon and Miller. Okay, uh, where do you think next month's fight would put you when you won, and would you be interested in fighting the winner of tomorrow night's fight between Lozon and, and I would uh, be Jim interested Miller? in fighting anybody. If Varner can't make the fight tomorrow again, I will suit up and fight Melvin again. So I just enjoy fighting i don't care who it is or when it is so yeah you know the lozon fight winner absolutely uh fighting melinda's coming over sure i don't care so you know the end goal is definitely the title that's where i want to go so whoever puts me closer to that is uh that a good enough answer i don't know fantastic i'm excited to see you next month too thank you hey cowboy how you doing doing all right all right, I have a question for you. You know there's fighters out there like Nick Newell who are disabled. He just won the XFO uh, championship. What do you feel about disabled fighters in MMA? Um, man, I, I don't want to take anyone's dreams or hopes away from it all, so I think if they can go out there and, and, and you know, are you asking me do they compete with us or just have just their own? Just in general. I'm a, I'm a disabled fighter as well. I, mean, I fight outside of Philadelphia, you know, and I just, he's an inspiration. He's in your weight class. How do you feel about him? What if he comes over here? stay over out there i don't think anyone should tell you what you can and can't do so if someone exactly. you know missing a leg wants to come in and fight come on i'm gonna kick his one leg i'm gonna tell you that but uh, <laughs> uh so exactly uh, if that answers your question yeah i'm not I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna fight i'm not gonna say well i'm gonna fight like a like a you know and it will so yeah you know what? Right, more power to you guys man 100 percent. all right thank you sir absolutely Hey, Cowboy. What's going on? Uh, there's a lot of different opinions on cutting weight. Uh, what, I was wondering what you walk around at and how much weight <laughs> you like to cut before you fight. Yeah, that's an issue I'm fighting right now as we speak. So uh, I didn't eat breakfast. That's a reason why, I guess. Uh, no, uh, lately I've been up towards 190 pounds, 188. You know, I've been big. And I think it has to do with my wakeboarding. It's like putting a lot of weight on my ass and legs. So um, <laughs> but cutting weight, I've been terrible at dieting. I like to eat candy and sugar is something that keeps me going. I'd rather not eat real food and eat hot tamales just because I feel it gives me energy and I like yeah. the way they taste. Um, so, and I wait till the last minute and do it the absolute worst way to do it. So <laughs> I'm the total wrong guy to ask what yeah. the right way to w cut weight is. You know, I'm, I'm 
five hours on the treadmill running and sitting in the sauna dying and everyone hates me and I come here pissed off and angry and so yeah, it's I'm the definite wrong guy. That sounds miserable. Yeah, it uh, is. One more quick one. Uh, then fluid. you get a fight of the night bonus the next night. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's true. So. I uh, flew in from New York and uh, there are so many fans in New York State that are just craving live MMA. What do we need to do as a community to get MMA legalized in New York? Um, I hear it's the culinary union, is what it is. So uh, as weird as that sounds. That is a weird Yeah, answer. so they, um, from the casinos and, right. and so, uh, but that's what I think you have to attack is the culinary union. I have no idea, I would love to fight in New York, man. Are you killing yeah. me at the garden, what? So right. uh, yeah, it'd be unreal. I'm 100% with you. I'll be the first one on the fight. So I'll even fight first of the night. So I don't care. Yeah, it'll be fun. All right. Thanks, Cowboy. Good luck in January. You're welcome. I'm going to get the hug. Are you ready for your hug? I am ready. Are you ready? Meet me right there. All right. I don't want to make your boyfriend mad. I'm about to have another fight, so. Thanks for allowing your girlfriend to do that. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, Cowboy, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. I'm 40 years old, and um, I boxed when I was younger. I made the transition, a transition to MMA and had my first fight back in September. And like you said, I prepared right, everything was fine, but the nerves going out there, they're just no explaining it. Yeah. At my age, you get injured a lot easier. What is your advice as far as training through the injuries and when not to train? It's funny as you say that because when I was 19 and 20, I remember I could get up, not warm up, run down, throw my gloves and be late to sparring, jump in there and go and be fine. And now it takes me 45 minutes to warm up. I got to warm up to get out of bed. I don't know if any of you all have to warm up to get out of bed, but I do. I get up. Oh, fuck. So, so Training and knowing when to pull the brakes and pull back now, you know, sometimes I only train once a day just because my body doesn't allow me to do that anymore. So just listen to your body, man. Be smart because training through injuries, then you're injured your whole camp and then you got to fight injured. I fight injured anyway because I say I'm going to be there. Goddamn, I'm going to be there, you know, and that's, that's my word. And so uh, being smart and, and learning to nurse that injury is, is, is the key, man, I think. So listen to your body. Listen to your body, yeah, man. Yeah. And listen to the wife or the girl. That's another <laughs> important. All right. Good luck next yeah. one, bro. What's up, cowboy? What's going on? Hey, um, what kind of insights could you give us into Leonard Garcia's training camp? I mean, that's my brother, man. Is he going to come out and fucking do it? Yes, he is. This is the most intense and dedicated I've seen, Leonard. You know, him and I had a couple of talks on the way to the gym. Like, Leonard, bro, what the fuck, man? Pull it together. This is it. This is it, man. This is it, you know? So, and he says, I fight best with my back against the wall. I fight the best when I have, when, when I have no other options, you know? And uh, so we're gonna go out there tomorrow night, we're gonna see it, you know? And it, it makes me like teary-eyed right now just talking about him getting motivated and getting ready, you know? And this is the most I've seen him dedicated and most I've seen him just all together, putting everything together. So I 100% think he's come out there and, uh, and give it to him. And who do you think has an advantage, of, you know, in the case of a late replacement? So on the one hand, Leonard's had a full eight, 10 week training camp, but he really doesn't know a lot about his opponent, right? Cause he's only been uh, announced in the last couple weeks. Right. So does he have the advantage having a full training camp for somebody who doesn't know who he's fighting <laughs> or does the late replacement come in with all upside and really no downside because he's not really expected to win? Well, the uh, Max Holloway, uh, our old manager now manages Max. So uh, we kind of know him coming up, you know, he's six and one. 
the guy takes a fight on short notice, so you got to be kind of crazy. You know, you got to be ready to go out there and shit and get and fucking pull the trigger. So that craziness relays into the ring, you know. So Leonard has to be definitely aware this guy's coming. He's not just coming to, to take a loss. You know, he's coming in, guns blazing, ready to go. And we're aware of that. We know what Max going to do, you know. And I think these two are going to go out there, stand and throw down, you know. And that's one thing Leonard does. He has, there's no quit. You don't see him set back. He closes his eyes and fucking gives it. So uh, it's going to be an exciting fight. Don't blink for sure. Right. And kind of along those lines, um, you know, I hate to go back so far, but I don't know no. if it was UFC 149, the whole John Jones debacle, right? Um, he had Shell Sun in, kind of step up last minute, and John Jones is like, hey, you know, I'm a champ. You know, I need a proper training camp to prepare for my opponent. If you were in his shoes, would yes, you have to Yes, I would have fought. They could call me tomorrow and ask me to fight right, John Jones. Cool. I think cool. you need to fight. That's our job. I don't think you should cur up and find a way out. So, yes, my answer. And I, he's my teammate. And we have this discussion all the time. I say, you should have done it. And he goes, well, you don't make a million to fight. And I say, well, you're right. But I fucking fight every time with all my heart, so. All right, appreciate it. Thanks. Me again. <laughs> so uh, speaking of Leonard, I know he uh, lives out at your ranch with you. So what was your motivation to build that ranch? And what's the best part of living there? Oh, man, that's, uh, that's my dream, you know. I remember living in Denver, Colorado, and wanted a place where I could shoot my guns and ride my four-wheelers and have horses and do all the things that I don't even use now because I have it, and why would I use it if I have it? Because when you don't have it, you fucking want it, you know? So, uh, <laughs> but uh, the motivation to build the ranch, it was, it was, I remember coming up and having to go from gym to gym to gym and, and try and get trainers, and I was nobody. I, you know, who, who was cowboy back then? No one. I'd come in with amateur fights, and no one wanted to help me, so I'd jump around, jump around, and I always wanted, you know, Nate Marco was a, was a good guy, an ambassador to help me out along the way, and I wanted to answer all these questions to people, like, what do I do for sponsorship? What do I do for cutting weight? What do I do for this or for that? And so the ranch to me was to give, you know, the guys that are best in their area or the up-and-coming fighters a chance to come out and ask me and Leonard and, and train with Carlos Condit and GSP and all the great guys and be able to answer these questions through them, you know, whatever they want. So that, to me, it was kind of like giving back in a roundabout way. So what's the best part? For me is uh, seeing all the new guys come in, man. That, that really the best part to me. I get to see different looks from all around the country, all around the world. Awesome. Yeah. Cool stuff. Hi. Hi. Um, I know this is for questions, so it is a question. Can I get a picture with you? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm waiting for a creative. Don't you get a free bag of shit if you have a creative question? <laughs> right? I'd be motivated for some free UFC shit. I don't know. That's Gator Belly. Lucchese, handmade. I didn't shoot him, no, but I got a rattlesnake pair. I did. I actually blew it up with some C4. I was out, I was with, I was with, with the army and Jackson, they came down, we did uh, some semi rounds, which are like little uh, paintballs in real bullets. It's kind of fun. And we, uh, I got to play, you know, terrorists trying to attack these guys. And there were snakes over in the bush and one of the sergeants was like, let's blow them up. I was like, fuck yeah, let's blow them up. So <laughs> they did. And I took the, the carcass and had it made in a pair of boots. So it was cool. <laughs> Hi, Cowboy. Hello. Okay, my question is, when you're chasing your dream, what was the lowest point in your career? Like, people will do, like, cleaning houses, you know, working jobs you don't want to do. What was the hardest thing you had to do to make it where you are today? Oh, man, the hardest thing I had to do was probably move away from my friends and my family, you know, move to, make the move to Albuquerque, where Leonard Garcia and I lived in a closet. And when I say a closet, I mean a bunk bed that was in a closet that when we opened the door, someone couldn't be standing. So we lived, you know, he was above me, our, our clothes hung on a thing. So that was my lowest low, no money. Leonard fought Roger Ward, made $40,000, and we lived on that for two years, the two of us. And uh, he basically supported me, and we just chased that dream. So that was my lowest point, you know, living in a closet, training every day at Jackson. I lived upstairs. I mean, it was, that was to me, to look back at that now and see what I have now and all the things and, and have a bank account that I can just go fill my car up and be okay. You know, that to me, to look back on those days when I was like, man, am I gonna eat today? Hey, Leonard, can I have 20 bucks? You know, so that, those were my, my, lowest, my lowest lows. 
Well, but my best, job. but my best. They were my best times also, you know, looking back and, and seeing where I came from that, you know? Well, good job. Way Thank to go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, being a cowboy and liking to shoot shit and shoot your guns, what do you think of the possible? Uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> um, they're not going to take my guns. There you I go. I can tell you that. Attaboy. So uh, I have 44 guns, and uh, they're not going to take my guns. Man, no my what. boy's got you beat bad. I'm 100% <laughs> I think they might need to enforce how and who we give guns to, but there's also Americans out there like me that are respectful and responsible with our weapons, you know? And right. uh, there's people that, that they shouldn't take that away. And they're not going to. I mean, there's too many people out there that are, that are for gun control. And, you know, you get a couple guys with anything that mess it up for everybody. But, uh, yeah, if they outlay on guns, it, it won't happen. But they're not going to take mine. Well, my boy's got you beat bad. He's got 118 gain, uh, gun safe, and he's got that completely filled plus yeah. on. <laughs> he got more money than me, I guess. Damn. I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> he just likes to spend his money on one thing. I hear you, man. Back to risk. Leonard's getting a three to one. You want to leave here with me, go to the sports book and take that bet? I will. I got $200 in my pocket, my per diem. I'll gladly put on Leonard right now. So Let's go. <laughs> I got a creative question for you. All right. I turn 18 in four years. Would you agree to fight me? Yes, I'll fight you tomorrow shake if he does it. Tell him, bring that shit on. You shake on it? I'll gladly shake on it. I'll be old and Down decrepit. There? Yeah, come on. Hey, it might be 195 in five years, right? That's just fine. All right. That it? I'm done wasting your time? Oh, all right. What do you think about The question was, what do I think about fishnet fight shorts? Um, <laughs> I, get, I, get, I guess if you can pull them off, my man, I don't know. I'd, my bollocks would probably fall out of the fishnets I'd be worried about. I don't know. So, <laughs> all right. My question is, have you ever hit someone in the head and asked yourself, what the fuck is his head made of? Yeah, Leonard Garcia. <laughs> I do every day, like, come on, dude. So yeah, he, uh, I don't know what he's got, but he's got something that will not turn the lights off. I'll put several head kicks to him, and he just backs up and says, come on, motherfucker. I mean, that's how we talk in the fight, so you know, I mean, it's easy. <laughs> so, so if see this guy come out tomorrow night and not put him away, it ain't gonna happen. Nice, All thanks, right. brother. How's it going, Cowboy? What's going on? Hey, a uh, couple questions uh, regarding Anthony Pettis. Uh, first of all, how did the beef start? And uh, just basically, what are you doing to prepare for that fight? Um, as far as how the beef start, I think I started the beef by telling him, come on. And so I'll gladly take that. You know, the truth hurts, Barrett. So yeah. uh, it's probably definitely me talking all the shit. And uh, what am I doing to prepare for that fight, man? Same thing I do, you know, we're really working on my wrestling, because like he says, uh, I don't know if he's going to try and shoot on me, but I plan on going out there and standing with Anthony. You know, his striking's right at the level that I want to be at. So, uh, come on, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time, cowboy. You're welcome. I have a question. Since you haven't had lunch, do you want to have dinner with us? Where at? And are you buying? Of course. <laughs> Wherever you want. Sounds good. I have to bring my missus, but we can definitely make that work. Go for it. All right. <laughs> The question is, what do I think about the marijuana policy as far as states that have legalized marijuana, you're saying? So I believe that the policy should stay because we can't show up drunk to fight either. 
So does that make sense? So I think he should be able to smoke his weed and do whatever he wants on his free time. But when it comes time to show up a fucking game day, he shouldn't come in under any kind, you know, because who's to say that marijuana, I mean, granted, it's not going to, but if, if that's okay, then why can't people use, you know, so I think um, no drugs should be allowed come fight day, but what you want to do on your own time is your own time. And uh, if you're in a state that legalized marijuana, same thing as legalized alcohol, I think you should be allowed to do it, but uh, not while you're performing for the UFC. The question was, do I think it's fair of how they uh, punish each person for, diff for, for the same offense, like if someone gets six months or someone gets a year? And that all depends on your track record and, I guess, um, the, how much you paid your lawyer. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know how that works, but uh, that, that's up to the judge, man. I, I have no idea. It's like saying the same thing for someone getting murder and what they get time for that. I don't know. No judge that. So, listen, we have kind of a special surprise here yeah? for the Fight Club, so I want you guys to do a big welcome. I'm going to bring out someone who's coming into the UFC and is going to fight for the world title for women at 135, Liz Kermush. Come fighting on, Ronda Rousey, February 23rd in Anaheim. I'd like you guys to ask a couple questions. Her and Donald will stay on stage. Yeah, girl. Good. I'll ask the first question, Liz. I'm going to take the first question. Oh, go, I'm, excuse me, I'm sorry. How do you Jeremy. feel coming into the UFC, headlining your very first fight, over Dan Henderson? Uh, one, I, I don't want to take the, the no, light no. away from him. You know, obviously, <laughs> obviously he deserves it. You know, he he's been fighting a lot longer than I have, but I'm excited to to be doing that. I mean, it's a great great opportunity. Hell yeah! All right, I'll ask this to the both of you. Uh, with all the shit talking and the stuff people say, is there anything that fires either of you up the most? Something someone would say that people wouldn't think would fire you up, like people think mom jokes or things like that, but is there something that would fire either of you up that would really make you want to fight a little harder? Um, no, it's more of a motivator for me. I really enjoy when people say it because all it does is just make me want to fight that much more and make me work that much harder. So for me, uh, I think it's actually the opposite effect of what people are expecting. And I say it's the person that I'm fighting when I'm standing here at weigh-ins pissed off and they say, come on, bitch, and you're like, yeah, motherfucker. So that to me, that to me motivates me and fuels my fire. Sorry, Reed, I have a bad mouth. You guys should have known that before you put me up here. <laughs> Beep. Thank you. Uh, this one's for Liz. Okay, obviously I'm not going to ask you what your game plan is going into the Ronda Rousey fight because you're going to Not get, get arm barred. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but how are you preparing, because obviously she's, she's the arm collector, everybody knows what her secret is. How are you preparing for that fight? Um, what are you going to do differently that is going to uh, set yourself apart from her other opponents? Not necessarily what your game plan is, but what, what are some things that you could reveal to us that you're going to do differently in order to come out of that bout victorious? You mean besides not get armbarred? Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe I fool her, maybe I do a judo throw to her and manage to armbar her. I mean, no one would expect that one, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, comes out of left field. Uh, the training camp is a little bit different, a lot, lot more weight training, bulking up, getting a little bit stronger, and we're actually traveling to different fight camps and bringing people in that we didn't necessarily do before. But for the most part, it's pretty much the same. I mean, we've been training from day one when she took the title for this fight. We just finally got the opportunity for it. Very good. And uh, to piggyback what, what Donald said, uh, congratulations headlining over Dan Henderson. That's a, that's a big honor. Thank so you. So no disrespect to Dan, but congratulations. Thank you. This one's for Cowboy. Do you think uh, Barner was just ducking Gallard the other night? Yeah. Uh, like I said, I brought my shit ready to go in case he pulls out again, so I'm going to get in there and give it. But the only problem with having a track record is it sucks, you know? So if you keep doing the same thing, doing the same thing, he might have been sick, and he might have been, but how it looks for everyone else, it sucks. Um, they said he was sick, man. I can't, I don't know, I can't tell you how he felt or what he did, but... Uh, would I have fought sick? Yeah, I'd have thrown a ball over Melvin and went out there and got it done, so. Thank you. Yeah. So, Donald, uh, why don't you tell him what you said to me that day when you called me about him being sick? Well, 
I was sitting at home and I seen Reed back there loving up on Varner and I said, why don't you slam that dude's head in the wall and tell him to get his shit and go out there and fight and backstage. So I just, I just think if you say you're gonna show up to fight, goddamn, you should show up to fight, you know? Those are what we get paid to do and we show up and we fight with everything we got for you guys, you know? And uh, I plan on doing that every time and that's my word. So Liz, I'd like to ask you, as a woman, how, how did you get into fighting? I mean, how did, how did that start? How, because there's not a lot of people out there doing that that are female, and how did you find a camp and, and find people to train with? Well, I was really fortunate. Um, when I started off, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I wanted to get back into martial arts, because I did a little bit of everything as a kid, and I was just looking for something for, with discipline, something to get in shape, and everybody suggested MMA, so I'm like, you know what, I'll give it a try. And then after getting my face bashed in a few times, I figured, you know, if I'm doing that, I might as well get paid to do it. And I might as well do it for a living rather than just a part-time thing with black eyes. And uh, I just walked by my gym, and the trainers were just such great people, and they were so welcoming that I was hooked from day one. And the UFC belt would help. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So to wrap this up, oh, we got one more question. You got a chance to win it. I got All my right. winner in, in <laughs> mind, so this better be good. And it was me. Wow, no pressure. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask three questions then just to increase my odds here. Um, Liz, if you were to beat Ronda Rousey, would you be willing to fight Chris Cyborg? And if so, would you make her come down and wait, or would you go up and wait to face her? Um, I would absolutely be willing to fight Chris Cyborg. Uh, when I got into this, I thought I was a 145er. I'm like, yeah, that's about where I, where I walk around. So I'll just bulk up and be a little bit bigger, not realizing I'm way too tiny for that division. Um, so I, it wouldn't be any different now, but I do realize I'm a 135er, and if she wants to fight for the 135 belt, then she has to come down to the 135 weight division. Yeah, okay. And then actually, uh, for both of you, you know, I read a, an article this morning about the controversy surrounding Cain Velasquez's brown pride tattoo. Do you guys have a view on whether you think that's offensive or not? Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, if I had a white pride tattoo across my chest, I think she would be said a little different. That's all I got to say. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you know, um, everybody has strong feelings and, and they back what they believe and you have the right to. I mean, uh, one thing that I learned in the military is we fight for everybody's rights to say and do as they please so that everybody has the freedom to make choices. But uh, when you make something that vocal, you have to understand too that it's going to have a backlash. Sure. And last question uh, for both of you. Wh who are your top three MMA fighters to watch? When you guys are at home on the couch watching the fights, who do you guys like to see fight? <laughs> if, if I'm going to be honest, uh, I don't have cable. I don't have satellite. Uh, I, when I watch fights, it's I'm YouTubing something just to I got to cable in my RV. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how much cable costs? Fight for the UFC. Well, after that, after that belt, then I'll maybe, right. maybe I'll get cable in the house. Uh, so I just, I love when a good show is put on, and usually, in all honesty, I love seeing the women, because every single time they go to fight, they know that they have to represent women as a whole, so they put in everything they have. I like watching women fight, because little skills sometimes they don't have, and they fucking just fight, sit in the pocket <laughs> and throw down, especially at the amateur <laughs> level and the up and coming fight, so my favorite thing to do is watch girls fight, man, I really, 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 really enjoy, especially on the street. <laughs> Yeah, and, and he's right. right, girls yeah. Girls are nasty, you right. know? Thank you, appreciate I have it. to wrap it up. So the winner of the contest is a question I really like, which was the lady up there who asked the question about Donald's lowest low, because I, I really enjoyed your answer, because I, I know what you guys go through to get where, to where you are. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give Liz a big hand. Served in the military for the yeah, United States of America, and Donald Cerrone, both fighting. Thank you. Shoot